So my counterpart is my buddy Jessica Toomey. She is a kindergarten teacher in New Jersey. So my Twitter handle's right here, her Twitter handle's right there. Um, just a, a brief background first. Um, I actually got in contact with Jessica about a year ago last summer, and it just so happened that this year uh, our class collaborated all year. And so that was really special to me because in the previous year, all I had done for connecting, like, you know, with some classes outside of the state or like outside of our little community, um, it was just like a, hey, you know, it's, it's Read Across America Week and we're gonna like read this book together and we connect one time and then that's it, we never see you again. So this was a year long collaboration. It was so special. So I look forward to sharing with you and I don't know, so I'm sure someone will cut me off <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm talking too long. Okay, but I'm gonna try to keep this to 10 or 15 minutes, okay? So when I'm sharing, I want you to just kind of keep your mind open to not exactly doing the exact same thing. I mean, you're more than welcome to, but how is, how is what I'm doing can relate to the grade level that you're working with or the teachers that you're working with um, kind of thing, okay? And I'm also gonna be sharing some of the mindset behind or some of the thoughts that Jessica and I have while uh, we facilitate and create experiences for the kids, okay? And yeah, she's not here today. Uh, she actually just got out of school today. So follow her on Twitter, give her some love, okay? So going through the Innovating Play Cycle, we start with connecting. So our connection started in the fall. And you might be like, well, how did you guys initially get started with your class? So I, kindergarten teacher, we do sharing in the classroom, you know, like when the kids bring their sharing item from home and, you know, they, they share. And I think it's so awesome that the kids share. But I also get tired of doing it after a couple weeks and kind of need to get spiced up a little bit too. So we started sharing on Flipgrid. So like when we do our sharing, it's like the guess the item. So, you know, if I'm talking about my, my clicker, I'd be like, you know, clue number one, it's black. Clue number two, it changes slides. Clue number three, um, it has a battery in it. And then like, you know, what is it? And it's like, it's a clicker. So that's what they did on, on Flipgrid. And I had the link and I tossed the link on Twitter and said, any teachers who want to participate with my kids and have them guess the item and like have your kids play too, join us. And so Jessica saw it and I love how she's about as, as spontaneous as I am because she's like, oh, we'll do that tomorrow or something. And so, uh, so her kids chimed in on the Flipgrid and responded back to my kids. So that was the very first time that she and I had done something together. It was totally spontaneous. It wasn't even planned. Um, then we had done a couple more things and then we started to think, well, what is a way that we can have our kids be connected frequently? like ongoing and so again so another thing that we do in kindergarten you know we talk about the weather right and so like you know in the past like you know last year when I did the weather with my kids we sing the weather watcher song a kid goes outside comes back inside they change the dial of what the weather type is we chart it in our spreadsheet I mean that's probably a little bit extra but and then that's it so in California you know it's sunny days and then more sunny days and then if we're lucky we get to have a partly cloudy day and there's one cloud in the sky so this year we recorded the weather every day on flipgrid so there would be two weather reports oh, one from a california kiddo and one from a new jersey kiddo so we would get to see what the weather was like over there and we got to experience seasons like it snows we got to see snow so this is like th this i actually think this was like the date of um our first one of our first ones so we started from november and we went all the way to my last day of school so we have a ton of videos in that grid and i can't tell you just how many experiences came from this weather flip grid because it, it became more more than just the weather the kids would see each other and they would know each other's names and then they would be like you know uh well side note like one of my kids got glasses and so then their kids kind of like oh did kira get glasses you know and like just like little things like that they look in the background they'll be like what is that back there like like you guys keep your backpacks outside we would never be able to keep our backpacks outside so like little things that they catch on to that would turn into like it could that led to like a potential activity. Jessica and I saw curriculum ties and we totally would like run with that. So we connected in the fall and it started with our weather flip grid. So I kind of touched on some of these things while I was going through. So some questions that Jessica and I ask each other, like, so this is, this was one of our initial questions. How can we seamlessly involve each other in, each, in our classes? Because you guys, you guys all know that 
if it doesn't feel like extra, you're going to do it. And so this wasn't extra because the weather is something that we did every day. Reporting the weather was something we did every day and we just added another component to it. And it was, it was very seamless in how we blended it in the classroom every day. Okay, so just something for you to think about with that. Um, if you, cause it, I'm also trying to share, like, if you're thinking of trying to do uh, some type of a year-long collaboration, here are some things that can kind of guide you, some guiding questions, okay? Um, when we're creating opportunities for the kids, we ask ourselves, like, you know, which tool can we use for the kids to learn and engage with together? Some of you guys have been in my presentations and I've been talking about, does the tool offer a space for collaboration? Can I take a link like Flipgrid and pass it on to Jessica's class for her class to participate? Can I take the link with all that engagement and hand it off to parents and share what we're doing in the classroom? So uh, so that goes with that. And then, um, oh, I have to, I, I failed to mention, I should have mentioned this. So I'm kind of a last minute person and I made my slides last night. I don't think I'm the only one. I've talked to some other fellow buddies of mine who also made their slides the day before. But anyway, so I was telling Jessica that I'm going to be doing this and she's like, hey, can I, you know, make slides with you? So she made the slides with me. And what I really love about Jessica is that she is just so deep with her thinking. Like, they're, like towards the end, I have a couple of her quotes and I'm like, I can't just say, I can't like, I can't repeat what you had said perfectly. So I'm just going to put your words in the slides. Okay, so this was her question. How can we form connections between the world in which we live so our small little world with the larger world, okay? So I took my kids in, their, in our little California community and we expanded it to life in New Jersey, okay? So those are some guiding questions with that. Um, so you're gonna catch on to the theme here that the next, you know, we talked about fall, now we're in the winter, all right? So the next uh, step in the innovating play cycle is wondering, so we were wondering through the winter. And again, like I said, with the weather flip grid, it sparked opportunities for more. So my kids started to see like, how come the New Jersey kids get snow and they have snow days and we want snow? And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I better try to come up with a wannabe version of a snow day in California. So, uh, so with that, uh, we started, we celebrated the snow and created different activities that tied with our standards uh, and with relevance to the snow so for example this is snow dough it smells so good it's like conditioner and I think baking soda or something like that it smelled awesome I actually just left it in the cabinet for a while and it made my cabinet smell good the classroom smelled good oh, and the kids loved it it has like a really cool texture so um, so that was one thing we had done this was uh, it's just a uh, paint with like practicing 101 correspondence and counting the numbers to a hundred here um, well actually let me talk about this one first Again, something that the kids had saw in uh, Jessica's class, they had made like snowman water bottles after reading one of those snowman books. And um, like, what does your snowman do at night? So I, you know, tied that together and we made ours too. So again, things that they see in their classroom and like, hey, we want to do that in our classroom. So we had, the, we had those in our window. And then this was really cool. So uh, Jessica's like, can you pass on the list that you guys use for your sight words? And she's like, my kids are going to be doing a project for you guys. And I'm like, okay. So I did. And what they did was with the snow sand, they wrote out the words in the sand. As, in, as they were writing it, they were um, saying the word, spelling it, spelling it out, saying it. And they recorded a sentence with it. And then they passed that link on to us so my kids could pull it up on the Chromebook. And they were listening, to, they were listening and writing along with their friend. Uh, during the center in their own snow stand. So we got to share an experience together with that. Okay, again, how can I take a link? This was Jessica's link. How can I take a link and how can it be shared so that the experience doesn't just live in one classroom, it can live in more than one classroom. Okay, so there were some other activities that we had done with this, but that is the jits of that. So some questions that kind of come from, uh, I guess, this experience. Again, connections, connecting, connections, this is what do we see with connections with our curriculum? So even though sometimes we were at different places, there are still concepts that we're reviewing or practicing, and that's when we would bring our kids together to go further. It, it, while the, our constant was sharing the weather together, but then we also had um, a variety of activities in between. Okay, um, how do we celebrate the differences? Like it snowed, and I could have just been like, oh, well, Sorry guys, it's just a whole bunch of sun for us. <laughs> but we got to celebrate the snow together in our own way. And 
the fact that my kids got to see the perspective of what it what it's like to live in New Jersey that's huge and just like the empathy that that's developed with the kids so like her kids she had told me that um, that her kids had they heard about the California fires and they were like what happens if something happens to our California friends because the, the fires are happening in California and so it wasn't in our region of California but they were able to understand that you know she said that you know her kids are okay look at they're showing up to school still they're okay so that 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 sense of that empathy sense too and um, for my kids it was like Mrs. Toomey's doing the weather report today because it's a snow day and there's no school that means that you know they can't drive on the roads like so trying to that's like expanding their schema expanding what they know um, at such a young age and this is this is their learning like they, this is this is their norm like this they starting out in kindergarten they they're gonna and I probably expect something like this next year, and it'd be awesome if it can be something that's continued. Um, obviously, not with the exact same class, but like with an experience similar. Okay, so now we're playing in the spring. So again, with the weather flip grid as being our constant, it kind of helped us to kind of run with what's in our environments. So I have to say that there was, uh, I think it was on Valentine's Day actually, that her class had recorded their weather flip grid in their garden. They were like, we chose this spot to record the weather in today because this spot changes. And in the background, it was just dirt. And so I was like, guys, our garden doesn't look like that right now in February. It has all kinds of plants. So I got to take my kids to our school garden. I didn't take my kids last year, like the previous year, I didn't even take them to the garden. I didn't, I didn't think to, but this year we had a reason to go. So we went and um, this, we went twice actually. We went one time with our garden teacher who gave us a tour of the garden. And another time we went in and we brought in her class live time on a Google Hangout on the iPad. Okay, so this is, these, this, these are our Andrews talking to each other in the garden. And so while we were in the garden, um, my kids had been studying like uh, plant features and uh, the plant life cycle. So they came to uh, look more closely at plants and draw the plants. And this same day, I had taken a bunch of stuff. I wish I had that picture. Uh, you might, no, you can't see it in this picture. I had brought out like, I brought my classroom outdoors that day and they planted beans that day. And so while we were doing all of that, the New Jersey kids were making a mural with paper scraps uh, of what they were seeing in our garden. So this is us playing together, okay? So um, something that comes from that is how can we integrate technology and hands-on learning approaches together, okay? Because I've been saying this in my other presentations that you don't have to ditch manipulatives, you don't have to ditch the toys just because technology hits the scene. Marry the two together, okay? So that's the question that we're, that that we constantly ask ourselves as well. And so, you know, summer, fall, winter, spring, and here's summer. Um, so at the end, uh, we were trying to come up with a culminating activity, and I have to kind of interject before I start sharing about this. Some of you guys might have no noticed my necklace that I'm wearing that I did make myself. But so at the end of the year, um, I was thinking, you know, uh, well, first of all, her kids are gonna be in school for like three more weeks, and they're not gonna have our weather reports, and they're like, that connection's not going to be there. I'm sure they were going to miss it. That's sad, you know? And so I was, I was thinking, how can, what is one more thing my kids can give, one, one last thing that my kids can give Jessica's kids? And so I was thinking, running with the idea of a memory, and I, you know, looked up books about memories. And so, so, I, so, and then I found one about the memory string. And so I don't know if you guys have read that book. I, the, I'm drawing a blank on the author right now. But the idea was that, in the book, the girl had a necklace, a string of buttons, and the buttons represented something in her family. And so um, I took that idea and thought like, well, we could do the same thing with beads, and each bead represents an experience or a memory that we had with our New Jersey friends. And I could probably go through right now and tell you about every single bead, probably won't because for the sake of time, but that is what, that, that, what my necklace represents, that's why I'm wearing it in my presentations. Um, so it, this is the year-long memory string. And so I have to just say that next year I'll probably be doing it a little bit differently. It's, I have very bad willpower and it was really hard not to tell Jessica, hey, this is what we're doing because she has like really epic ideas. So next year I think we're thinking of building it together. Now that she knows about it, we're gonna build it together as we go instead of, instead of trying to cram it in the last couple days of school.
that was that was rough but anyway so it was pretty magical a lot of the things that we did this year it just so happened that the package with necklaces arrived in time for the kids to get it on our last day of school so they got to open it up from us and then they we did a google hangout and they got to see us right after it so imagine if you're like five or six years old you get something in the mail from your buddy because our kids were partnered up. You get something in the mail from your buddy and then you get to see them live time on a hangout. So we did a Google Hangout and we shared with them that we were gonna be doing a summer flip grid so that we can keep in touch over the summer. Um, and that this is what this is. So in the summer, our kids, this is what our kids did on the last day of school. Like, what do you like to do in the summer? What are you looking forward to doing? Draw a picture and they recorded it on the flip grid. And um, mind you, this was like before, like this was a couple weeks ago when I took the screenshot. And this one is like, you know, where are the places that you're going to go? What books are you reading? And how are you playing? So a, a way for the kids to keep in touch over the summer. This is now with the families. Okay, so it's up to the families to help continue the, the relationship that we have built. Um, so I kind of want to share with like, you know, be as transparent as you can with what you're doing in your classroom with your families and and with the world. I'm gonna come over here now and read Jessica's words. So as we were collaborating, these, this is like what kind of comes out as we were creating the slides. So she says, it doesn't matter if you live in the city or the country, it doesn't matter what your limits are. The world is meant for learning and exploring and we do not have to have limits on that. Okay, so again, that, that I, this even in this video alone, my kids in California are listening, her kids in New Jersey are listening, I was in New Mexico, and here I am in Chicago talking to all y'all. Okay, so we don't have to have limits in the way that we share and the way that we learn. Okay, if you can see beyond the, if you can see beyond the limits, we can reach each other, see each other, and the world changes. Okay, so I think I have one more slide that I want to leave you with, again, with the idea of being as transparent as you can with what you're doing. Learning goes beyond the classroom, so it does not end. So it, uh, like our experience doesn't die. Like the, the school year ended, bye. They have all of those experiences and all of those memories. And, the, and we've done, especially Jessica, has shared a lot of what we've done with families. And so those experiences gets to live on with the families and the, as they go out and venture into the world, as they continue to live. Um, it gets passed on to families and it moves into the world, a full learning transfer on the highest level. And those are words from Jessica. So she has her own way of being here today. So I appreciate you guys staying and like listening to my experience. Hopefully that can inspire you to think of how you want to share what you're doing, perhaps on Twitter. There are other platforms that are out there.